Welcome all back to the channel everybody. It is time to get rolling and do some dangling. We got some rain coming down right now. I'm fishing with the man, the CEO behind the Guggen Squad, Mr. Matt Kendrick, longtime fishing friend and fellow dangler. He's got a new boat. I am calling the Ultra because it kind of looks like a uh, Michelob Ultra. I got the silver bullet. Everybody knows today's video is sponsored by Butcher Box. Y'all, if you love meat as much as we do here at the Rackley household, you've got to get signed up for Butcher Box. This is a service that me and Stephanie use that is just awesome. It gives you high quality meats delivered to your doorstep. You don't have to go to the grocery store. It is fantastic. The beef is just amazing. It's 100% grass fed, pasture raised. Uh, the chicken is actually free range and USDA certified organic. The pork is raised crate free. The, the fish is awesome too. It's wild caught salmon, cod, scallops, haddock, and the butcher box bacon is also sourced from heritage breed pigs and is uncured, it's nitrate free, and it's sugar free. And speaking of bacon, this is why you gotta get signed up right now. ButcherBox is offering free bacon for life. You get one pack of bacon for free in every order for the life of your membership. So you gotta get signed up right now. This is also gonna be a great value, y'all. I mean, we're talking $6 per meal. Some of us spend that on coffee every day. Not me, of course, but some people do. They do have flexibility on the boxes as well, so you don't have to just get a beef box. You can switch it up to meet your needs and also they offer flexibility on deliveries so you can get more frequent deliveries just whatever matches your needs and you can cancel at any time no penalties it's responsibly sourced meat it's free shipping to your doorstep y'all there's just not a bad thing i could say about butcher box it's just a really good deal high quality stuff and it's just convenient since i live with a dietitian i'm usually subjected to high quality fruits meats and vegetables in butcher box just passes the test with Stephanie. She loves it. As much as I like eating Golden Krispies and Deer Patties all year long, I love to switch it up with a good old apple glazed pork chop, and there's nothing quite like a reverse sear filet of beef, man. So fill up your plate with some delicious meat or fill up the entire fridge for the family. Just visit the link in the description, butcherbox.com. Click the link in the description, it'll take you right there. And thank you, ButcherBox, for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get it. ramp now the skies have cleared and it's time to get some dangle on y'all we're we're here late because we're we're going pretty far out of our way to go fishing today but this is a lake that i haven't been to in probably over eight years so there's a video on my channel me visiting here uh with my buddy john thomas or a larkin uh trying to throw swim baits we didn't catch a bass this is my only experience on this lake is fishing it and not catching a fish so uh, we're coming in with a new, a new attitude, new skills, new lures, and a full parking lot, which always means there's probably some fishing here, I would think. Hot rods and ho hogs, barbecue express. Hot rods, hot barbecue express, baby. Okay. Daggum, I see a lot of, I see a lot of bass boat trailers. I see some <laughs> bay boat trailers. Where's the derb? There's a mix. Where's the derb weigh-in? Sign us up. Is it too late? You think it's too late? I, I mean, we have our confidence level always high, though. Always high. Skeeter ZXR 21. Look at the deck on that baby. I have actually never been in this uh, in this model right here. Uh, similar to my old FXR, but this is the new ZXR, which has the same hull as the FXR, which I think is the best riding boat that I've ever been in. Is the is that ZXR? Uh, you know, it's always arguable between Phoenix and Skeeter and um, I actually Bass Cat, if, if we're being honest with ourselves, is probably the best riding boat there is. But these, uh, there's a lot more Skeeters and Phoenixes out there. But uh, 
We're gonna see how she rides today. A little wind, she already, got dirty. she already got super dirty with the road grime. I haven't started up a Yamaha in a while. Holy crap! There's a huge big bass laying over here. I'm telling you, this thing's like eight pounds. What in the world? Oh man, Matt didn't put his plug in. <laughs> Good thing about these skeeters, you can actually put the plug in from right here. All right, plugs in. Guys, look at the size of this old bloated big bass right there. Look at that wide-eyed. That's like a mount you see in a restaurant from the 50s. It just didn't quite get the eyes or the scales right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that guy is popping busting out in them eyeballs. And that's actually something that, uh, you know, I've talked about it briefly in a couple other videos. You know, the reason that I'm, I'm having to drive out to this lake today and some other lakes is because of, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of fish dying in some of our local lakes. And there's, there's some reasoning behind that. It has to do with uh, fishing pressure and a lot of tournaments that have been going on. And there's just... There's a lot of mortality, delayed mortality that goes along with that. And just general fish care. Um, over the f past few years, we just had so, we've had so many anglers that, uh, you know, so many anglers catching fish and getting better at fishing and the, the technology, live scoping and all that stuff. We're just seeing a decline in some of our lakes. And anyway, I'm gonna be, um, I'm gonna be talking about that in some other videos with you guys and going into some more detail, but uh, I always hate seeing big bass dead at the ramp, you know? That's never, never a good thing. And you got tackle in here? Yeah, you got some. Okay. I figured, you know, I figured the CEO of, uh, of Guggen's probably got a few baits in his, I in his tackle a, box. I put a couple bags in here. <laughs> you need that split screen action? Yeah, how do you do that? Literally first time turning on the arm in here. <laughs> so, uh, I'm a hummingbird man, I don't know these You're, you're a bird man. Uh, so, combos. combos. Okay. We'll do, uh, Let's see, combo two is probably a safe option. Or, or combo five over here? Combo five? It's a, it's a good, let's uh, let's save that preset number one. Oh, okay, that's how that works. So we can do that one. Virgin on pad moment right now. Here we go. First spot check. She's got a little bait, but she's muddy. Oh, got fish. Got fish. Fish on right there, baby. Oh, first bite. First bite in the boat. That was almost, yeah, the, the first fish in the new vessel. All right, so. So we got a little something going on here in the dirty. Do you have any black and blue plastics? You got all the plastics. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, get a plastic going. Oh, let's see what we got here. It's different in here. It's, it's in the sides. No. This uh, isn't. This isn't the deal. No, you gotta. Right here, some bug, it's bugs and crawls in this one here. Okay. Yeah. 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 Give me them crawls, baby. Oh, you weren't lying. You got some baits. You got way more than I do. Okeechobee crawled ever hurt anybody's feelings. Go ahead and get a couple out. Put the rod in there. I got gotcha. you. Both sides have. So this is literally set up for team derbs. Yes. I'm ready. I'm ready to team derb right now. <laughs> okay, y'all. Um, so by the way, me and Matt, John B, and uh, our good buddy on the product team, Trey. I've known for a long time. We're going to be fishing a couple of team derbs this year. Uh, we've got a little series that we're doing. And you know, normally, me and Matt, we are known as Team Nursing Home. Uh, that's just what we do is win. But uh, we've we're decided we're splitting up this year. We're going to compete against each other. It's going down. So stay tuned for all that. A little summer derbs. It's just going to be uh, basically a beer drinking fest. 
uh, for us. And, um, you know, we'll catch a few fish along the way, I'm sure. There's fish all over the Are you serious? Hey, 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 don't run over my fish, dude. Don't, don't freaking. Hang on, dude, I gotta retie. You can't just come in hot two weeks later off a knot tie. You gotta refresh that puppy. Three odd hammer hook, quarter ounce tungsten, pegged. This is the way of the Texas rig. If you've never rigged a Texas rig, you just go in about a quarter inch, pop that puppy out, rotate around that uh, bend, and you just wanna pump that baby up, bring it right through the top, straight, narrow, ready to dangle. Oh man, my text bow's got exposed. Got a problem? Ah, I got it. Oh, God, just grazed myself. Don't worry, Bassmaster Classic's going on today. I'm not in it, in case you're wondering. Did not make the cut this year. Maybe one day I'll be a full tour pro. Until then, I'll just be a Guggen. That's okay with me. It's never a bad time for a bandito bug. I'm just thinking uh, a little muddier water, some claw disturbance. Might get one on the line. <laughs> Me and Matt just spent a, uh, a week catching smallmouth in the Uper. So we're a little um, fuddled right now. We were holding spinning rods. Well, if you don't get a uh, bite in the first hour, you gotta crack an ultra. That's like house rules. Texas rules. Yeah, Texas rules. I'm about 30 minutes in, so I've got 30 minutes to catch one or else I'm gonna have to crack an ultra in the MK Ultra boat. It's just summer rules. This is summer ball right now, yeah. We were just covered up with shads, shad pods. Oh man, there's a lot of, a lot of shadtivity out here. Get that out. There we go. Just pop her out. We got him. Got him? Yep. Oh my gosh. Wow. First bass landed dude he was swimming with it on the okeechobee yeah on the okeechobe matt was throwing a little black and blue vibrating jig and just thought i would go with the finesse version here a little craw that's the first ultra fish right there 12 and a half 13 i like it got her done i'm glad you're the first one to catch <sighs> you know had to do it. And that one just, I mean, he was swimming with it. I actually just looked down and my line was just taking off, swimming. But if you guys look closely amongst these lily pads, there are some harder uh, bushes. There's another one. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. This okay. is it. This is the program. This is the way? I'm, I'm figuring some, something out here. So, dude, they're not just biting it. They are choking it. I mean, that thing, it's gone. They're swimming with it. It's not a big one, but golly jeepers. So, uh, there's going to be some on these, these pad stems in here, but if you guys look close, there's also some little buck brush, and that, that's what grows up. When the lake is down, it's little bushes, and then um, the lake floods, the leaves die off of it, and you're just left with uh, a dry, hard bush, and fish like it. Hard? Can I say something when you're hooked up, I, bud? I, well, I thought I, it was grass. He was, like, running at me. Here we go. Here we go. MK Ultra <laughs> breaking the boat in right. First one in the boat for me. That's good, man. <laughs> little guy. First 30 minutes of the day though. We found something over here. Getting some bites. We found something by getting lost trying to find a ramp. We actually uh, drove through this neighborhood that's back here at first looking for a ramp. There wasn't anything there. We we're like, oh, those lily pads kind of look good. And then we went to the other side of the lake and it was all brown and muddy. And we're like, hey, well, let's go find that thing again. So that one was where, Matt? He was up in the grass. He was up, up? 
Yeah, like super shallow. Okay, super shallow. So they, they might be a little shallower. Ooh, look at this laid down grass over here. Focus in. Boom! Let's catch some. I'm excited. Oh! You all right? Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah, just hit my toe bone. Oh, yeah, something hard. I'm not used to these steps. Let's not forget before we get too carried away. Sunscreen needs to be applied. Protect those limbs. And also you might have seen our super sexual new performance wear collection with the squad tech technology flexible material this stuff is like butter on the skin and it is uh, SPF 50 so you can look fantastic feel fantastic and uh, you know protect yourself out there also very good at wicking away the moisture off your skin available at guggensquad.gov that's what I'm talking about came in hot well, look what just flew off right here the MK ultra favorite black and blue trench hog still got the little guys no right. we're on that 13 inch program for sure <laughs> <laughs> we'll find them we'll find the big ones but what did it come off of i wasn't paying attention i wasn't looking oh the <laughs> was it that bush or was it the reed oh, line? it was the far bush the, the back bush oh the back bush okay but on those bushes on the right bush. there that's what we're talking about we've had bites on pretty much you know the pads but um these little these little guys right here deserve an extra dangle it's been about 30 minutes without a bite. That's some sort of tournament summertime rule, I think. This uh, this beer right here, this matches your boat. It does. I <laughs> feel like it sh your boat should be named the Ultra. The Ultra? Something that We got the effect. Silver Bullet and we got the Ultra? We got, yeah, we got the Silver Bullet and the Ultra. It's a little summertime toast to good times. Cracker open? And mini bass. Let's see if I can one-hander. There we go. You know, mm. sometimes I like to drink it through my face mask. That's one good thing about the, uh, you know, the squad tech with the breathing holes right here. You just, you have the flavor forever. It's, the it's shotgun way. certified. We thoroughly tested it. Let's get them. Get on the Ami, do a little looking. Got him. There we go, baby. A better one? Right on this little point, point edge. One. Biggest one of the day. Coming up here. Coming up here and get him some craw. He ripped one pincher off. But he hanged on. Alright, nice fish. Nice fish right there. I'm going to give him a sniff right in his schnooter. Keeper. And uh, release them into the wild. But I think we're gonna do a little shifting here. Our morning, little morning bite, first hour. Uh, we got five, six, six or seven. Yeah. But um, we were just discussing there's like a color change out here. And it might have something to do with these fish. So uh, we're gonna actually look a little bit deeper, see if we can get some, um, some deeper grass lines and uh, tie on some other baits. Keep working on these babies. It's time for the, time for the hog. Time for the hog, you in there, do some work. up on a point and uh, dragged it off of a rock little gridiron so just a, a jig that you drag on the bottom felt that bottom came off of a rock and boom set the hook into her I say her like she's a big female but she's, you know, she's a two and three quarter pounder nice very nice well bam okay that's our first uh, offshore fish right there. We'll let it go. We'll switch up. 
from the, the midday dangle. God, that feels good. Just dragging it. It's dragging it. You feel like, boom. You're like, oh, oh buddy, buddy, baby. Oh, I got one. Boom. And then it just loads up. You know what I'm saying? Bam. God, it felt good. Okay. All right, second spot. A little offshore. Kind of. There's a point, main lake point. Caught a good one. So we got two decent fish right now. Uh, we're going to continue to look. Had a few more bites right there, but I, uh, yeah, just they weren't really connecting. I don't think they're really deep, and if they are, they're going to be suspended. Like the, the depth might be 20 or 30 feet, but the fish are probably going to be sitting in 10 to 12, just from what it looks like so far. And the water's dirty, so it's not going to be a good uh, offshore bite. So uh, I think we might continue. We're going to go try some islands. Is that what you got dialed in? Maybe some island points? So here's a point with the flooded, islands, man. Here's a point with flooded timber on it. Okay, I like the way that sounds. In emergent vegetation. On here. Let's do a little run. I feel like we need to see the lake a little bit. Muskets with wigglies and jigglies on my command. We send it downrange. That was a George Washington reference, by the way. I haven't lost my mind. Just feeling patriotic, you know what I'm saying? This is like a different lake over here where we just ran three miles or so. Yeah. The water is uh, much clearer. It's got a green tint to it now. It's not muddy. This has greater offshore potential. Oh, 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 oh. Gar. Got him. Gar just bit me. Like I'm bringing this gar up. He followed it right there. See him? Oh my God. See, that's a gar. Dude, that's amazing. You can see it's a gar on the freaking electronics. That's crazy. Color? I would do... Uh... Got him. There we go. Oh, God, it was a gar. <laughs> <laughs> he came jumping out of the water. Uh, something translucent. I don't know what the hell's going on here, but we, we've gotten in, gotten into a huge school of gar suspended on a point. I don't think I have a net. Dude, dude, I got this guy. Look at him. He's just clamped down on he's you. Clamped. Dude, he's clamped. Oh, he let me go, dude. Okay, folks, we're gonna we're gonna take a pause from the gar game. Never seen anything like this in my life. You know, maybe some muddy rivers and stuff where you see a bunch of gar, but never on a point feeding where literally anything you throw out there, they are busted on it. Getting smashed. You ever been smashed by a gar? Is it's actually a lot of fun. So anyway, yeah, yeah, I, I, I just love the tug. I love the tug. It don't matter if one. it's a bluegill or a shark. I want to catch it. First cast, Mondo Worm on the point, my man. This is a, this might be the best one of the day. Oh, baby! Look at this baby now. I think we could go weigh this one in at the Derby. This maybe. might be the Derb winner right here. Woo! It's Mondo season. Three or four pounder. It is, oh my God. It is Mondo season. June, get out your 10 inches, boys. It's time to give her a dangle offshore. Are you gonna do the old sling? Be careful, this, this don't do it, be, don't do it. Because you know what, the zebra mussels might have you down there on those rocks. Yeah, I feel like I'm back. Woo, yeah. Dude, that's that's my tournament partner right there. Team Nursing Team Home. Team Nursing Home bringing, it, bringing in the winning sack right now. Oh, yeah, oh, baby. Look at, look at that baby right there now. On the Mondo Worm. Dude, I'd love to see that. First cast. First cast on this point we just pulled up to. Short little fatty. Came off the guard hole. Got into the bass hole. Dude, that is a severe wow. case of the eatery right there. He wanted That's that. the fattest fish of the day, longest fish of the day. Just all around greatness. Folks at home. So good. Folks at home, that's what we came out here to do. Dangle a deep worm and catch one like that. Heck yeah. All right. Give you know, do what you gotta do with them and let them go. 
bite, little guy. Go tell your friends I'm coming. Next cast. That was sweet, dude. I cast it out and I think I missed the juice because I got in sand. I eventually got in the rock. You were in the rock immediately. Oh, immediately. And got pounded. Wah bam. I mean, absolutely hammered that worm. You saw it. I did. I, I was like, dude, are you in grass or is you getting a bite? And then wah bam. So um, that color you're throwing there is called plum. It's amazing. That's, uh, I don't know what it is, folks, about purple and red worms in the summer. There is definitely something to it. And I highly recommend if you're going to get one 10 inch worm color, it'd be plum. But if you're going to get a couple, I would do red bug. I would do blue fleck and I would do maybe black and blue. Uh, just go, go dark and purple with it. And that, that baby right there, that's, that's the worm that I designed for the Guggen baits. We designed that to be an offshore dragger, uh, come through the brush piles, a little sickle tail rather than a long ribbon tail. And it is a catcher. Oh yeah. That was a nice one. I'm surprised you weren't throwing a trench hog. Well, I like I like fishing deep, but I like fishing the worm deep. Yeah, I agree with that's, you. That's where I like. It really does come through that stuff nicely as oh, well. I'm back on the stuff. You back on? It? I just want to show you guys the rod tip action of what this looks like coming through, coming through some rocks. Oh gosh, it's gonna get hammered. Again. It just feels so good, doesn't it? It's gonna get throttled here in just a second. Apologize. That was awesome. Highlight of the day. Love to see it. I got a, I got a drink of coffee. That's, that's a toast. That's worth a toast. Oh, oh, oh. We really don't know much about fishing out here because this is our first time. Well, it's my second time and I've already had a dramatically better experience, but uh, it seems like the fish aren't super deep. They're in that mid depth. They're in that uh, post spawn mid depth of like five to 12. And uh, the spots that we found uh, bluegill, rather than shad seems to be pretty good uh, we found some some bluegill around the grass and around this uh, little rock edge so i'm going to continue with my football jig which is another fantastic offshore option uh, for this time of year i mean if i'm going to go deep i'm going deep cranks uh deep jig and a worm but uh i'd really never leave home without a 10 inch worm in june i got him got him certified well, bam bass number two off the point not quite as big as mk ultras but a fish nonetheless we're just dragging these rocks it seems like when we get in between the grass line and uh basically these open areas where there's rock that's the juice and it's only like six to ten foot these fish are just mid-depth so it's not like they're super deep but there's one, I can see them just coming out of the grass line, peeking their little noses out there. You get, you get a bite, my, my bud? My worm's out You get there. a bite? My worm's out there. Get your worm in. Get your worm in. Oh, 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 I had one. You had one? I had one. Oh my gosh. So, so this is what a grass clump looks like. It's eight foot right here. And um, when you get on the edge of this grass, sometimes you'll see just play a little peekaboo. They'll peek their nose out. They're obviously in there uh, doing their feeding. That's just what you want to see right there. You want to see them playing a little peekaboo, eating things, the jigglies and wigglies. Okay, last tip of the day, y'all. Rigging your football jigs, craws, and bugs. Probably the best trailers for that. But experiment around, but I'm just telling you on our crack and craw, our full size crack and craw, I take that first nub, first section, you can see these sections right here, just bite that off. And that makes the perfect size for a trailer. If you leave that extra one on, it's a little too long, especially if you're throwing half ounce and smaller. But that right there leaves the perfect amount of plastic to uh, get good action and uh, be nice and compact. So that is, uh, that is the tip of the day. I think that's the last tip of the day. We're just gonna do a little drag in here on these points. See if we can get another. Throw it out, drag. I like to do the sweep, the sweep method. 
just kind of sweep until you feel your cover that you're trying to get in. In this case, it's rocks or grass, and when you feel that, that's when you just slow down. Yeah, there, there, there we go. Rod tips jiggling. You know you're in the rocks. Slow down. Give it, you know, give it a couple pops. Let it sit there. Let it soak in the zone. If you're not feeling anything, don't, don't even bother. Just keep moving it. Little guy. They don't have to be big to eat mono worm. He still wanted it though. Dude, Dude every time we've been in that rock, it's like when you know, you know. You, you feel it. You know it's coming. Hydrilla. That's what that looks like right there. This is my best friend in Texas. Every lake that I've been to that has hydrilla is just a bass factory. It holds little micronutrients. There's invertebrates in there. There is, uh, you know, bait fish that can hide and bass that are literally green. It's like they're made for hydrilla. Texas Parks and Wildlife, please put this in every lake. I beg of you it will increase our fishery populations dramatically. Boaters can, you know, skiers and all that, they can, whatever, who cares? Who cares about skiing? Fishing is where it's at, we need more of this. Successful day out here, first time. Coming back to the lake in eight years, Matt's first time coming out to the lake. Bust a four pounder, catch them offshore, catch them up shallow, flipping, doing jigglies and wigglies, baby. Give her a proper rip there to a bar, bar, bar. Oh yeah, she runs right real right nice. Now. Oh yeah, bud. She feels, she feels great. She feels like a skeeter. Man, there's nothing like a brand new boat. It's like when you have a newborn child. Or four of them. Some of the best best times you'll remember. Oh, we're time, oh, we're in time for the derb weigh-in right now. It's 30, yeah, it's time. Yeah. So what, what are we bringing to the scales today? If we, so if we would've had, what did we, what did we have? We probably would've brought like 10 pounds. Three or four keepers? How many keepers did we have? We probably, uh, we probably caught four. Keepers. Yeah, four keepers. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say ten pounds for what we brought to the scales today. Probably wouldn't have uh, whooped up on the locals. Would have got a nice participation trophy, pat on the back, just a little donation. Dropper. Oh god. Dropper right on the toasty. Right on the toasties. Well, I think we did good today. Oh. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry about your foot. But I think I broke my toe. That's just part of boat ownership, you know? Yeah. You get those uh, little trailer run-ins, kneecap shins. But uh, we broke in the ultra pretty good today. Uh, Matt overheard the, the weigh-in they were having at the ramp. And uh, third place was eight pounds. So I think we would have Maybe been around that third place today. Maybe taking home about sixty dollars. Uh, you know, could have could have been in the dirt, man. Uh, it was so freaking hot today, guys. It was like hundred degrees. Um, I'm glad we got off the water when we did. And you'll notice on post spawn fish, they usually have uh, sores on their body. Uh, they get run down. They get like us when we get sick. Um, you know, they're not feeling good. They're recovering. They need to eat. They need to rest. Um, so it can be they just sit offshore, slow, drag it. Mm, big meal. Mm happy. So thank you for tuning in today and I also want to thank ButcherBox one more time for sponsoring uh, today's video. We will be back uh, with another adventure for you very soon. I'm actually heading to the mountains next so follow along. We'll see you on the next one. God bless you. See you soon.